Can I use the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra to match a traditional zoom lens for wildlife photography? Let's find out. I'm gonna be giving you guys three tips to shoot some banger shots of nature and wildlife using the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra. For this, we went over to the KL Bird Park to shoot some unique bird species and the flexibility that the S23 Ultra camera system gives us is perfect for this type of shoot. Now, since we're channeling our inner wildlife photographer here, most of these shots are gonna be taken at the 3x zoom level or the 10x zoom level. Let's jump right in. Tip number one and the base for this entire video is gonna be shooting an expert draw or the pro mode. The expert draw or pro mode, just like the previous Samsung phones, allows you full manual control on everything you're shooting, including ISO, shutter speed, which is exactly what we're gonna be using. And that gives us maximum control. Don't get me wrong, you can shoot in auto mode if you need, because it'll give you the quick and fastest result. But we're taking professional photos here, not like your aunt taking a picture of her pet cat. Starting off with the settings of the shutter speed. You wanna make sure you're able to capture and freeze the motion of the animal or the bird. For stationary birds, you wanna go with a shutter speed of between one over 60 all the way up to one over 250, eliminating any sort of motion blur that comes in. Now, if you wanna freeze the motion and the action, you wanna shoot with a shutter speed over one over 500. Like if you wanna catch the bird mid air or you wanna catch them fighting or playing, a higher shutter speed is gonna lock and freeze that motion in a moment of time. You can sometimes break this rule though if you wanna take panning shots, which is when you follow your subject as it's moving. For this, you wanna go with a lower shutter speed somewhere between one over 60 to one over 100 to make motion blur appear on whatever isn't moving, but your bird that's moving is gonna be tack sharp. Also, shooting in the export draw mode allows you to capture DNG images, which makes it easier for you to color grade or even edit your photos if you need. Tip number two is gonna be picking the right lens for this type of shoot. 90% of these shots, or over 90%, were shot between the 3x zoom and the 10x zoom optical zoom. Now in my personal opinion, you should stick your zoom level between 3 to 10x like I said, and the max you should go for is the 10x because that'll give you the best optical image quality without going into digital zoom territory. Now if you want to zoom in and capture some quick snaps at 25x, 30x, 100x, you can do that, but don't expect the image quality to be the same as the optical zoom at 10x. And just a bonus tip, just because this entire video is about the telephoto and wildlife photography, don't ignore the wider shots because sometimes you're in a moment where you can capture something really nice in a wide shot. Pause there, switch your lens because it's so easy and flexible and take those wider shots as well. The third and the final tip is pretty straightforward actually, is matching the eye line of the animal or the bird. So in most cases, you want to be either the same level as the eye or at least underneath the eye level to give you the best possible visual appeal to a shot. Now I know this feels like a very basic tip, but honestly, this is where a lot of people make a mistake. This is what separates someone who knows how to take pictures and who doesn't because in the eyes of the viewer, it looks like you knew what you were doing versus someone who's just pointing and shooting. Now, I really hope you guys enjoyed these three tips. Make sure you guys subscribe for more content like this. And if you do use the S20 Ultra to take some nature and wildlife photographs, make sure to tag us on our Instagram. We'll see you guys again in the next video. Until then, bye-bye.